All right, this is 48. This is a continuation of yesterday. So there's, it's not that there's really anything new. It's just when we're graphing it, today we're going to actually try to get it more accurate instead of just finding the vertex and then drawing the curve. Yesterday we just found the vertex, we drew the curve the direction it was opening, and then we drew the dotted line for the axis of symmetry. Today what we're going to do is start it the same way, find the vertex, but then we're going to find actual points around the vertex so that our graph is accurate, okay? So, steps to graphing a quadratic function. You already know the first step. Remember, Desmos will help you, but algebraically, algebraically, you would use x equals negative b over 2a. Actually, I don't like how that's written right here, so I'm going to write it like this. Negative b over 2a. There we go. You're going to use x equals negative b over 2a to find the um, x coordinate of the vertex. It also gives you the axis of symmetry because then immediately you know where that dotted line is going to go. Next, find the vertex with f of x, meaning you got the x coordinate from the vertex, you're going to plug it back in to get the y coordinate. Then you'll use the vertex as the middle point of your curve, and then we'll find two points above or below, either one. Then we're going to graph the points and make a parabola. Easy peasy, lemon squeezy. Number one, here we go. Anyone recognize this function? The mother function. It's the mother function. Uh, it does say right here quadratic parent function. You could come here and you could say this is the mother function. Meaning this is the um, parabola in its most simple form. You should not be on Desmos right now. You should not be on your Chromebook. You should just be writing, right? Um, it's the parabola in its most simple form. Nothing has been done to it. It's the starting parabola for all other parabolas, okay? So let's practice identifying A, B, and C from that standard form of the equation. Everybody right now, Make your guess as to what A, B, and C are and put it on paper. What did you say A is? Okay, be careful. A, B, and C should always be numbers. A is going to be the coefficient of x squared, okay? Not x squared. One. So it'd be 1. There's an understood 1 right there. What's B? Zero. What's C? Zero. Very good. So another way to write this, if you need to see it this way, you may not, but if you need to, you can write it like this. To understand why B is 0, why C is 0. So A, B, and C, we've got them 1, 0, 0. I need you to tell me, um, or I need you to start finding the x coordinate of the vertex using our formula. What was the formula? Negative B over 2A. Negative B over 2A. 
Uh, let's just come over here to do it. So x equals negative b over 2a. All right, what do you get? Negative zero over two times one. So you get zero. So the first, the x coordinate of the vertex is zero. How do I get the y coordinate? Plug it in. So now we're going to find f of zero. Shouldn't, shouldn't require a calculator here. We're plugging it into x squared. So it's going to be 0 squared, which is just 0. So it kind of feels weird because there's a lot of zeros here. But it makes sense because we said this was the mother function, and yesterday we talked about how the mother function sits right on the origin. So the vertex is zero, zero. What's the axis of symmetry formula? X equals zero. Can't get that one wrong, even if you forgot which number to use. But it should be the x coordinate of the vertex that you use. Okay? So do this one. Just another way, like, vertex has an x in it. Axis has an x in it. So just use that to remind you it's the x coordinate. So everything we've done so far is the same as yesterday. Here's the new part where we're going to take our time and actually try to graph this accurately. First, let's plot our vertex. Zero, zero. It's kind of hard to tell in here. Where the, is it right here? All right. Then I want you to drop a dotted line right down the middle. Drop a dotted line. What's that dotted line? Uh, axis, of axis of symmetry. It's going to serve the purpose of once I graph half my curve, I simply mirror image it to get the other half. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. So it's going to help me to remember where to mirror image it. If you don't have the dotted line, you might watch what I'm doing with the paper. Instead of mirror imaging, you know, to the left, I'm trying to think of what y'all are looking at. Instead of mirror imaging it to the left, you may accidentally mirror image it to the right, right and you don't want to do that. So the dotted line helps you remember where does, which direction do I need to go. Here's the new part, okay? We're going to get some points and plug them in to get the rest of the curve. We want to think smarter, not harder. You can pick any number you want and plug it in there, and it'll be on the graph. And there's a reason for that, which is going to come into play right here on domain and range. Remember this? Unit 1. Some of you did great. Some of you struggled. You're going to have to understand it. You can pick any number you want and plug it in. You can plug in 10. If I plugged in 10, what would the y value be? Look at the function. Careful. If I plug in 10 for x, what would I get for y? 20. I mean 100. 100. Do I want to graph 10, 100? No. No. So we want to graph numbers, first of all, that will fit on the graph. Second of all, we want to graph right here near the curve. Right? 10's on the graph, but 100 shoots off. That's because the curve is Im immediately shooting up, right? So we want to graph right around here. Like this is the hot spot. Like right there around the, the vertex, okay? So here's how you decide what points to use. I always put the vertex on my um, T-chart. Or you can put it, they're gonna they're saying to put it right here in the middle because then they're gonna we're gonna split it. You don't have to, I'll show you different ways. So we're gonna copy the vertex to right here. This is the vertex. Now 
Now we're going to count up from the x value. So what would go here? One. One. What would go here? One. Two. Two. Plug it in. Find the y values. Plug one in. Don't forget, this is a function. Plug one in. What do you get? F of one is one. If you need to, you could come here and say F of one equals one. If you need to understand, like, where does this one come from? It's because you plugged it in. What does F of two give you? It gives you four. So we're going to plot those points. We're going to plot one, one, and two, four. One, one, two, four. There's half my curve. Now, there's two ways to get the other half. The easiest way is to, is to recognize it's going to go to the other side of the dotted line, right? Um, here's what I like to do. I like to count how many spaces to the dotted line, and then I count past it. So watch. Two spaces to it, two spaces past it. So it's going to go here. One space to it, so one space past it. So that one's there. Now, does this one get reflected? No, because no, it's actually on it. That's the vertex. There's only one of those. And now you can see your curve. We can also fill in our t-chart with those two points we just found. What were they? This one is negative 1, 1, and this one is negative 2, So I feel like let's take one little note here, and I'm going to change color so it sticks out. These two numbers came from counting, um, came from counting, I hate to say from again, from the x value of vertex x value of the vertex, and then we count it. So the x value was 0, we counted 1, 2. If the x value had been 4, we would have written, if it had been 4, we would have written 5, 6, or, go the other direction, 3, 2. I like to go towards 0, because the numbers are smaller, by the way. If it had been 5, what numbers would you use? Six and seven, or countdown, four and three. Stay on the other side of that number. Let's try again. If it were eight, right? Two hands. Two hands. If it were eight, you could do nine, ten, but that's really big numbers. Or you could do seven, six. See what I'm doing? So you're always counting from the x value of the vertex, and I always count towards the zero because the numbers are smaller. You don't have to. You can go the other way. If you just like to go up every time, that's fine. Um, one last thing, and this is old news, but it's been a while, and some of you really struggled with it. Domain and range. Now, I have good news and I have bad news. Which one do you want first? Bad. Bad? bad. You're going to have to read the range. The bad news is you have to read the range. The good news, the domain on every single quadratic, you know what it is? What was the fancy phrase for that, though? It was... Three words. Points of origin. <laughs> Hangman. Remember that a question was when you have a quadratic, the domain will always be, and I'm trying to get you to answer it. Look at the picture. The domain is the x values covered by the graph. T. 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 What? Uh, 
Yo, one at a time. Add. Uh oh. L. Green one. Real. All real numbers. All real numbers. All real numbers. numbers. All real numbers. Yeah. This graph, as it is going up, it's also going it's getting out. out. So if I was to sit here and take my pencil, remember, take your pencil, hold it upright. Hold your pencil upright on the graph. The fact that this has an arrow on the end means you need to start out here at negative infinity. Does this start to come back? This has an arrow, which means back up all the way over here to negative infinity. Because even though it's only stopping right here on this picture, it's actually going up and out. So this graph is covering from negative infinity to another arrow, which means go to the positive infinity. So this whole graph is covering everything, the whole x-axis. So what is the domain? All real numbers. How do you know? Because it's a quadratic. I don't even have to graph it. It doesn't matter if it's opening up or down. It doesn't matter if it's opening up or down. It's all real numbers. Now, the fancy way to write it was negative infinity to positive infinity. Another way to write it, I'm going to write them all here, is this R stands for all real numbers. And if you remember set notation, it was all numbers x such that x is an element of all reals. Remember that? That's three different ways to write it. I have no clue which one the state's going to use. I feel like they would be more inclined to do interval notation because it's more commonly used in higher math classes, but I don't know. you got to know all three. I'm fine with you doing interval. And I also want you to make a note. This is always... All real numbers. The domain. If you ever get the domain wrong, that tells me you aren't listening. Because we, we just said it's always all real numbers. Now, range, you're going to have to actually read it. Make a note to yourself. You will have to read the range. It does change from problem to problem. So make a note. You must read it. You must read it. How do you read it? Here's your refresher. Lay your pencil down on your paper, on the graph, and put it at the lowest point of the graph. Does it start right here? Yes. Now you need to know what this y value is. What's the y value? This is Zero. What's it going to? Infinity. Infinity. So the range is zero to infinity. Now remember, is it touching zero? Yeah, the vertex is sitting right on it. So what goes here? Bracket. Now that's one way to write it. Here's the other way to write it. All values for y such that y is greater than or equal to zero. That's another way to write it. I'm fine with you doing interval notation. So while this is a headache, I know some of you are like, I really wish that never came up again. That is in all future math classes except for geometry, by the way. Domain is the same answer every time. So you should you should get half of it right if you're listening. Oh. Range is the only one you got to be careful. Now, if it were opening down, right, then it would have been, so imagine it opening down. It would have been coming from the bottom, which is negative infinity, and then we would find where it caps off up at the vertex, right? 
All right, let's go to the back and let's do the next one. Yep. Go ahead and start it. Label A, B, C. Find your x coordinate of the vertex using negative b over 2a. Then find the y coordinate. Then state the axis of symmetry. So that's old stuff. That's everything from yesterday. Go ahead and do it. What did you say a, b, and c are? 1, 0, negative 1. B is what? Zero. Zero. Did you get it? Negative four. And negative four. So what you get is the x coordinate of the vertex. Zero. What you get is the y coordinate. Negative four. So what's the axis of symmetry? Careful. X equals zero, right? Please don't forget that. That's that's yesterday's stuff. Today, graph it. Copy your vertex right here to the middle of this T-chart. Now we're going to count up or down from the X value of the vertex. So this is zero, so this would be one, two. To get the Y value, you literally are just plugging those in. So plug one in here. You would get negative three. Plug two in here. What do you get? What? I got zero. Because two squared is four, four minus four, right? I got zero there. Double check me. Now you could say here this is negative one, this is negative two, and you can plug those in. Or you could wait and come over here and mirror image it and get them. It's up to you. I'm going to go ahead and graph it. Plot your vertex, drop your vertical line, um, your vertical dotted line. So we got zero, negative four. Is it right there? Yeah. It's hard to tell when you're this close. There's my axis of symmetry. I'm going to plot one negative three and two zero how do i get the rest of my curve mirror image it reflect it over because it's symmetrical so this is two away so two over one away Then you can read the y value from those points. What's the domain? Now, range, you have to stop to think, right? Is the graph down here at all? Look nope. where my pen is. Nope. Nope. None. Nope. Not at all. And then all of a sudden, bam, it starts right here. Read the y value. Negative four. By the way, it's the y value of the vertex. Every time. So this is negative four. Yeah. And it's running to what direction? Infinity. To arrows, which means infinity. So this is going from negative uh, four to infinity. I do want you to write something that has not happened yet. Do you notice this had a zero in the y value and this had a zero in the y value? Do you notice those are right here? Do you remember what we said those are called? Close. It's the x-intercept. I want you to just label, draw an arrow, 
and say that these are the x-intercepts. Sometimes you see them as you're graphing it. You will have a short delta math assignment that will be just this, and it's important that you do it. When you come in tomorrow, I'm going to give you a piece of paper that will be page 49 where you're going to practice it in class, okay? I'd like you to, but I mean, have y'all already done it? Y'all probably didn't have time to do that.